Hello. In this video, I'm going to talk about the Horner-Wadsworth-Emmons reaction. You may uh, sometimes hear this reaction described as the Horner-Wittig reaction or the Wadsworth-Emmons reaction, but most people I know uh, describe this reaction as the Horner, Wadsworth, and Emmons reaction, and they, they don't put Wittig's name on it at all, just as, a, as an opportunity to uh, distinguish it from Wittig, though, though certainly Wittig's influence here is, is probably obvious. Okay, so there are a couple of differences. One, the phosphorus compound is a little bit different. Uh, two, the, the illid is generated in situ in its entirety. The phosphorus compound is this thing is called a phosphonate ester, uh, and it's... Uh, these are actually generally stable and you can store them, you can purify them, so there's some benefit there. We'll talk a little bit about how they are prepared. And, I've got, I've got. and the mechanism is a little bit different, but it has some, some similarities. So let's just talk about first the, the mechanism of this reaction. And in, in talking about the mechanism, we'll, we'll highlight one of the other types of uh, you know, benefits over the Wittig reaction. So first we have some sort of appropriate base. Um, and depending on, you know, phosphonates, these phosphonate esters are more acidic than the phosphonium salts leading to unstabilized or, or phosphorus solids, but they are uh, less acidic than those leading to stabilized phosphorus oil. So we still, we need a, a strong base. Uh, some people will use uh, sodium hydride. So I think I'll just use hydride for this. Hydride is a base. Uh, butyl lithium, potassium terbutoxide works in some cases. And I, I personally have used that base. Um, there, there are certainly a variety of, of, of options. And so this forms initially, this, you know, or, or what we form initially is the, I want to, I want to hide the resonance. I want to hide these arrows. I want to draw the initial carbon ion, and then I'll show its resonance contributor. So, you know, we draw, we draw this carbon ion, and it has a resonance contributor where, whoops. And we have a carbon phosphorus double bond, and uh, the ox negative charge on the oxygen on the phosphorus. And if R is electron withdrawing, like the stabilized other stabilized illids, if R is electron withdrawing, then we have other resonance contribute contributions from R. But we'll leave that leave that be for a moment. Yeah. And so this thing here is our active nucleophile. Here is cyclohexanone or electron. I'm going to rotate cyclohexanone. I'm going to copy and use this variation. I'm going to rotate this thing around uh, because I'm going to draw the same sort of cycloaddition yes. mechanism that I drew for the Wittig reaction, where we form a, a, a bond. End up. Let's drag. Let's drag my ethoxy groups out of the way here. where it looks like we're going to form this four-membered oxyphosphatane. Uh, yeah, this thing's going to look a little crowded because I've got these ethoxy groups. I've got R. I've got the cyclopentyl ring. It's not letting me draw a square. Oxygen, phosphorus. There's an R group here. There's a cyclopentyl group here. And I am working to get all of these other things in place. Use the ethoxies. This the, the oxygen. Yeah. 
and this oxygen has a negative charge. All right, so here's my oxophosphatane, and then this oxophosphatane comes away, it comes apart in a very similar way to the one uh, that happens in the Wittig reaction. We form a carbon a carbon double bond at the expense of the carbon phosphorus double bond. We form an oxygen phosphorus double bond at the expense of the carbon oxygen single bond. And so, select tool, here we go. And the, the phosphorus species then looks like And, and so then you get this phosphonate anion, which is water soluble. This uh, water soluble phosphonate anion dramatically in increases the ability to purify these reactions because uh, if you set them up right, you convert you you your your phosphonate's really polar. You're, you've consumed all of your ketone or aldehyde. You have your phosphate ions water soluble. And uh, the purification is easy. I, I mentioned in the Wittig reaction that the triphenylphosphine oxide is uh, usually not soluble, but it's not completely insoluble. And depending on the type of purification you're going to do next, like if you're going to do a recrystallization, that can sometimes cause troubles. If you're going to do chromatography, usually you're okay. Uh, if you're going to do chromatography here, any unreacted phosphonate is really, really polar, so it, it's pretty easy to separate from the alkene. This ends my video on the, oh, I was, this is not, I was going to briefly share how one might synthesize uh, 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 one of these, these phosphonates. So let's just talk about converting chloropropane into a phosphonate. Uh, one of the cool things about this is this reaction does not require uh, multiple steps. You can just uh, heat up this compound here, triethyl phosphite. Uh, phosphorus with three ethoxy groups on it. Uh, and it starts off like the, the formation of the phosphorus illids for the Fittig reaction. Phos nucleophilic phosphorus. Uh, oxygen. oxygen. And I'm going oh, oh. I'm gonna, I'm gonna to end up drawing out one of these ethyl groups here. And we have a positive charge. And I've got a chlorine. Well, and so it turns out that uh, this doesn't need anything else. The chloride anion that's produced can act as an inter as a nu as a nucleophile within the reaction and display and react at one of these ethyl groups and displace the rest of this thing as a leaving group. And so if you were to do this reaction and monitor it, uh, say by gas chromatography or something, you would get, you would be able to detect the chloroethane or bromoethane that is given off. Okay. Chloroethane at least is a gas. I think bromoethane might be a liquid unless you're, you're refluxing the reaction. And my experience is you reflux the reaction. So. You know, and so even though it gives off chloroethane, which looks like it might react further with more phosphonate, it tends to come out of the reaction as a gas. So uh, it's got some advantages over the, the Wittig version as well. Thank you for watching.